Hello and welcome to LSC Focus. So Liverpool are back in Premier League action this weekend. Thankfully, only a five-day wait between games this time because I think the eight-day wait between the West Ham game and the Crystal Palace game, I don't know about you, but for me, it was killer. I don't like waiting that long to watch Liverpool play because we are just such an exciting team and this is such an exciting season so far and I really do feel like this game will potentially be our first chance to actually see Liverpool hit full, full throttle for the first time this season because I think it's fair to say that... You know, we've been easing ourselves into the season a little bit. The last two performances, obviously they were fantastic. We won both games, haven't conceded a goal yet. And especially the one against West Ham, we absolutely steamrolled them. But I think it's a huge compliment to pay Liverpool that we still don't really feel like we've got out of third gear or something like that. I really do feel like we haven't got to the point where we're playing the best possible football we can play. And, you know, maybe that's something we won't see for a while. It's something that we might only see for games against Man City and Chelsea and stuff like that. Or the games in the Champions League or big cup matches or stuff like that. But I do feel like, you know, these league games, the home league games against teams like Brighton, are a great opportunity for us to really start flexing our muscles early on in the season. And like I said, said now we've eased ourselves in with the first couple of matches and we've kind of found our feet you know a few players who came back from the World Cup a little bit later than others and maybe didn't have the full preseason that you'd want them to get I think they've now had the time to fully get themselves up to speed they've had a few matches to ease themselves in so I feel like now we're really going to start seeing the proper Liverpool and this could really be in a way almost our first proper home game of the season because like I said the West Ham game was great and all that and we did get a fantastic scoreline but I think in terms of the way we performed you could maybe, maybe argue it was wasn't quite like some of the home games we had last season where we did welcome relatively poor size to Anfield. You know, teams that did almost just turn up to get beat. And that is a fantastic thing that Anfield is becoming this impenetrable fortress where there are so many teams who turn up there now. And, you know, Brighton are a team that I do kind of include in that. And yes, they will try, but they do turn up to Anfield and think, you know what, we're going to really struggle to get a result here. I'm really happy that we're becoming a team like that. We need to be considered in the kind of same bracket as Man City and Man U used to be where teams will come in and think, you know what, if you offered me a 2-0 loss here and now, I'd take that. And that's the kind of mindset we want teams to come to Anfield in. And I think if we carry on performing like we did at Anfield in these kind of games last season, like we did when we faced Brighton at the end of last season and thrashed them 4-0, then that is the stage we will, uh, to which we will get. And that is the kind of stage we want to be at if we want to challenge for the league title. So team news going into this match. I mean, to be honest, there isn't that much. Most players now are actually fully fit. I think our only notable absentees are obviously Dejan Lovren and Oxley chamberlain who is going to be out for a much longer time. Uh, but I think all in all, we've got a pretty fit squad. You know, anyone who did have fitness complaints and stuff like that in preseason has come back. You know, Joel Matip is fine. Ranyar Klavan, um, I think, has completed his transfer to Cagliari. I don't really know. I mean, I highly doubt he'll play any part in this game whatsoever. It's I seem fairly sure that he's left the club. I think we announced it now and everything but yeah apart from that we've got pretty much everyone available I mean there are concerns around Fabinho I think a few people are looking at that situation and thinking it's a little bit strange you know he was stayed on the bench against West Ham and didn't come on he wasn't even included in on the bench against Crystal Palace so a few people worried about his fitness but I mean he was included in the squad against West Ham and he did travel with the team to Selhurst Park and everything in the last game so I don't think there are any worries there I think it is just a matter of easing him in so it is entirely possible that this weekend will be our first chance to see Fabinho I mean like I said it's going to be one of the more not easy games of the season but the kind of game where we're hoping that by the time he gets an hour mark we'll be about three goals up and three points will be wrapped up and we can start to bring on a few more fringe players and ease everyone else who hasn't had as many minutes into first team action and stuff like that so hopefully we do see Fabinho this weekend as for the actual lineup we're going to put out I think Allison in goal you know sound he's absolutely fantastic only misplaced four passes so far this season and he's attempted over 50 I think so that is absolutely fantastic he's so important to Liverpool and I think he will be important in this game as well with the speed with which he gets the ball forward it did feel against Crystal Palace and you know this is going to be a gradual thing it's not something you can expect straight away because it's a huge transition in terms of styles of play but it does start to feel now like players are getting to grips a little bit more with the way he wants to distribute with the ball you know the way that sometimes he pings a pass straight into midfield and he's expecting his midfielders to just take the ball turn and go and our players just aren't really used to that but as the game went on at Selhurst Park and also a little bit against West Ham as well it did start to feel like 
the players are understanding now what Alisson expects of them and realising that actually if they do what he wants them to do then we're going to create a lot more chances just from things like goal kicks and stuff like that so yeah Alisson here you never know maybe he gets his first proper test as a Liverpool goalkeeper ideally not we want this to be a walk in the park but if we do get to see him pull out a couple of boss saves then there's no problems there as for the back four I think Trent at right back you know had a some people say a slightly iffy start to the season. I think given how late he came back from the World Cup and his age, he's been absolutely fine. I think, like I said in the Post Palace video, we asked a little bit too much of him in that game, so it's understandable why maybe he didn't perform to his absolute best. I think he was better against West Ham than a lot of people were giving credit for, and I think he will again be very important in this game as we look to get goals and we look to push those fullbacks forward uh, to help the attacks. The centre-back pairing, obviously, Joe Gomez and Virgil van Dijk, both of them absolutely fantastic against against Crystal Palace. You know, Virgil van Dijk as good, if not better, than any of us could have hoped for when he signed for Liverpool. And Joe Gomez really does feel like he's coming on in that centre-back role. And of course, he's got fantastic tutors around him with Alisson behind him and of course, van Dijk next to him. And then Andrew Robertson completes the back four. And then the midfield three, this is where there are a few interesting questions because obviously Henderson has come on in both games now. And I think out of him or Wijnaldum, who are the two players who have played in that number six role so far this season, I think Henderson's probably the one you see as the more natural fit. But I think given how well Gene Van Alders performed this season and how much I think this game actually suits him in terms of he's quite a deep line playmaker and obviously he does have those defensive abilities and he will do a lot of work in that number six role and he still suits it very well. In terms of his ability to distribute and in terms of his ability as well to drive the ball forward when he has it at his feet, I think he actually maybe even suits this game a little bit more than Jordan Henderson and obviously Fabinho still not quite there in terms of being up to speed with the Jurgen Klopp's methods. Although hopefully I'd quite like to see him on the bench because I think this is this will be a good game to actually get him on the pitch, give him a few minutes and see how he gets on. And then alongside G Van Aldum, I think Milner and Cater, you know, it feels like, you know, there's obviously so many options in midfield that we could go with and we could sort of rotate to try and make a more attacking midfield there. But I think that midfield has performed so well in the first two games and I think really proved themselves to be a solid attacking unit in the game against West Ham that it almost feels unfair to actually take them out. You know, I feel like it would be cruel after all of them have performed so well just to bomb them out because we feel like what we've got on the bench is better. So until any of them really put a foot wrong, I think we keep that midfield three of Vinaldum at the six, Milner in the eight, and then Cater slightly further forward linking up with the attack. And speaking of the attack, it is, of course, going to be Salah, Firmino and Mane. I think Firmino will be a really key player for us in this game. And I'll come on to why a little bit more when I talk about the way that Brighton defend and how Firmino is the kind of player who's perfect for taking advantage of that. But I also think he's been a little bit off the boil in the first two Premier League games. And again, he's one of those players who came back late from the World Cup. So you've kind of got to expect that. It's understandable. And he is notoriously a bit of a slow starter for Liverpool. I mean, when we've looked at pre-seasons in the past, he normally takes until the last couple of friendlies before we start the competitive football, before Firmino really looks like he's ready to start playing competitive football. And that's when he arrives at the very start of pre-season. So, you know, I'm not criticising the lad. I think it's absolutely fine that it's taking him a little bit of time to find his feet. But I feel like now, after those two games against West Ham and against Palace and a little bit more time to get himself up to speed. I really feel like this is the game where we will start to see the real Firmino and that is a fantastic thing because you know Salah was a little bit off it against Crystal Palace and I think a lot of that is down to the fact that him and Firmino complement each other very well. I think Mane's a little bit different because he does play a slightly more creative role as well rather than you know trying to get goals as much as Firmino and Salah do and also he's a bit more of a kind of making things happen all by himself player. He's very good at just driving at defences with the ball, making a few step overs, getting round people and forcing the issue that way. Whereas Firmino and Salah are very much designed to complement each other, to play off each other. That's how they play their best football. And, you know, it's something that we saw became a real problem in Kiev when Salah came off. And I think it was a little bit of a problem for Salah in the game against Crystal Palace where, you know, he was good and he was still very much involved, but he wasn't quite able to do the things that we know he is capable of. And I think, like I said, now Firmino's had a little bit more time, a little bit more training, a little bit more time to get up to speed. I really feel like we're going to see the real Firmino this weekend and the positive of that is that we will be seeing the real Salah and Mane as well. So taking a look at Brighton then, obviously we've only had two games of the season so far so it is a little bit difficult to judge how they're going to play but we have benefited from the fact that they played Man United last weekend so we kind of know how they're going to look to set up against a big team, how they're going to look to make a giant killing and take a scalp because they did it, not only did they try and do it, they did it very successfully against Man United and I'll come on to that a little bit more later but I think in terms of the way 
they defend, they are not that great. You know, they've conceded four goals already. Two of those were against Watford as well. And I think they try and employ this zonal marking system. And obviously, you know, when that's employed well, it works fantastically. It's really useful. It's something that Liverpool do to great effect in a lot of games with the way that we play. But I think when Brighton try and do it, they do have a problem with the fact that they often get caught ball watching. And they do also allow players in behind an awful lot. And that's why I think Alisson's distribution will be key. Because when they play this zonal marking, they do play quite a high line as well. And again, I'll come on to how they defend in the big games. But I'm not really expecting them to park the bus too much. I I think they'll try and get at us in a different way and try and stop us scoring with different methods but I think the benefit of that for Liverpool is like I said they do get caught ball watching they do allow players in behind and if Alisson's distribution is on point and if he gets the ball out quickly and crucially if our midfielders and our fullbacks and our centre-backs all understand what Alisson is trying to do with his distribution and make sure that they keep the ball moving as quickly as he wants it moving then we can really catch Brighton out and really get them in places where they don't want to be caught and I also think set pieces could end up being key with for us as well and it's something that we haven't really been great at over the years recently certainly since Jurgen Klopp arrived I don't think we've really been as effective from set pieces as we actually need to be the last time we really took advantage of set pieces properly was the 13-14 season obviously that's also the season where we come closer closer to the title than we have ever been in the past so they're very important in terms of just trying to pick up points and get extra goals here and there and like I said with the way that Brighton defend the way that they zonally mark they do often leave players available and in space and I also think that'll be really important like I said for a player like Firmino because he's so difficult to keep an eye on I mean even they were even getting caught out by Romelu Lukaku against Man United and he's a player who is a very orthodox centre forward you can kind of you have a clear idea of where he's going to be and what he's going to try and do he tries to stay in the box in those goal threatening areas and he tries to provide an outlet for the players around him to create goal scoring chances and if they're going to allow him space and leave him in the box unavailable with no one marking him then they are going to seriously struggle against a player like Firmino and against Salah and Mane as well because you know Firmino is far from an orthodox centre forward he is going to drop deep he's going to drop out wide as well and I mean if we're talking about a focal point of our attack the one that you probably single out really for being the most central as a striker probably the most orthodox center forward in the team is probably Mohamed Salah but even he he's a right winger by trade he's dropping out wide he even swaps places with Sadio Mane at times so our, our unpredictable movement is going to be absolutely key in that in this game and that's why I think a fully fit and firing Roberto Firmino will be pivotal to trying to unlock that Brighton defense but when you look at the way they attack I've mainly paid attention to the way they did it against Man United because I feel like they're going to try and follow a similar model against us although obviously we attack more than Man United, so maybe they will sit off us ever so slightly more. But a lot of it was trying to get through Glenn Murray, and he, he represents a very different threat to what Christian Benteke did in the Crystal Palace game because Glenn Murray, he wants to get in the bowl, box a, little, a lot more. He also drops wide ever so slightly, whereas the difference with Benteke was he'd often drop deep to try and make knockdowns, and we did deal with that very well. I just think the main thing about dealing with Glenn Murray and dealing with Brighton's attack in general is going to be focused because, like I said, they do try and get into the box. The way they try and get goals is by getting in behind. That's how Glenn Murray obviously got his goal against Man United. Just getting in front of the defender and receiving the ball in a dangerous area and applying a very good finish. So I think as long as our centre-backs and our goalkeeper and our full-backs and of course Genie Wijnaldum in midfield as well are always alert to that and always looking out for where Glenn Murray and Brighton's other attackers are going to be and making sure they don't get caught out by the long ball, I think we will do very well and hopefully keep yet another clean sheet. And I think the one interesting thing, as I mentioned before, about whether or not Brighton are going to part the bus is just how highly they pressed against Man United. I think the way they press the ball and they try to hound out single players was really really impressive because it wasn't just one player chasing after the ball they did it in packs that was all very well orchestrated and I feel like that's probably the way they're going to try and stop Liverpool as well and if anything that's probably an encouraging sign because when we look at our players they're incredibly good at operating in tight spaces you know Mohamed Salah is a fantastic dribbler uh, Sadio Mane's got great acceleration to just uh, fly out of a tight space within a moment's notice and even midfielders like you know Naby Keita 
Alonso, who's fantastic at dribbling the ball and holding onto it when there are thousands of players around him. And Gini Wijnaldum, who's great at using his body to keep players at arm's length and stuff like that. I really feel like if that's the model Brighton are going to go for, you know, if they execute it perfectly, then they could do very well. But if they leave one crack open and if they allow our players to get out of those tight spaces, then we're going to end up with a lot of space and a huge amount of attackers to aim at to be able to get in behind Brighton. So I really do feel like this should hopefully be not a walk in the park for Liverpool because like I said, Brighton will press. They will look to make it difficult. But this could be yet another 4-0 or 5-0. And, you know, that's obviously what we all want because it would put Liverpool in another big step forward in the Premier League title race. So that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, give it a like down there. If you're new around here as well, hit that subscribe button there. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter. And I'll be back on Sunday evening, uh, Saturday evening, after we've hopefully beaten Brighton. Bye for now.